CBS Eye on Health, Hypochondria or Serious Disease with Darius Chisholm. Hello and welcome to CBS Eye on Health. I'm Darius Chisholm. Today we're discussing women's health services at Allegheny Health Network. AHN doctors understand that every woman has unique health needs. They specialize in women at every age and every stage of life. Joining me is Julie Kessler, whose own health needs brought her to AHN when her stomach troubles began to affect other aspects of her life. Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you. So Thank excited you for having to have me. you here. Absolutely. So let's start off talking about some of the health problems that you were having when you were younger and what were some of the symptoms and problems? Sure. Well, I've seemed to have had stomach issues my whole life as far back as I can remember. Um, I remember as a child, after I ate, I would have to go lie down. I had stomach pain, stomach cramping, bloating, things like that. And I think it was usually after I ate. Um, the pediatrician didn't really think it was, you know, much to be concerned about, thought that my stomach was sensitive. Um, so it was kind of stayed the same all through, you know, my childhood. And then later on, when I was a teenager, um, when I was in high school, it got worse. Um, just more frequent and more more painful and more you know like tight cramping and things like that and so my parents took me to a gastroenterologist and they you know did some tests and I was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome also known as IBS and, and after of course having that diagnosis and understanding mm -hmm. that did symptoms change for you did you any better or worse? I didn't need any medication or anything like that. Um, they just kind of helped me with my diet and what I could do um, with my lifestyle to try to help manage it. Um, and so the symptoms kind of, you know, stayed the same. So therefore, you know, from that point on in my life, whenever I had stomach issues, I would just think to myself, oh, that's my IBS acting up. And I didn't worry about it or think that I needed to go back to the doctor or anything like that. I just kind of accepted it and tried to do better to work through it, I guess. And as a young adult, did it bother you maybe when you were out with friends or doing different things when you were active? Um, not so much. It didn't really inhibit me from doing anything. What about how it affected you mentally? Were you struggling at all with having this diagnosis and dealing with the symptoms emotionally and mentally? What, what was your state of mind? I think that IBS might be a little bit related to like how you're feeling emotionally and things like that. Um, for me, I know still, you know, to, to this day, like when I get nervous or something like that, my stomach uh, lets me know. Um, I still just kind of feel. Yeah. So you were feeling that as, as a young adult. We fast mm -hmm. forward a little. You have a family, three children. And after your third child, all of these symptoms began to get worse. My digestive symptoms kind of have stayed the same, but after I had my third child, I had new symptoms, and none of them were actually digestive system sy symptoms, um, but I had new symptoms, and I didn't know what was wrong. Like symptoms, what, were ha what was happening? Some of my new symptoms after my pregnancy were I had pain in my joints, I had um, numbness and tingling in my hands, which made me nervous a lot. Um, I had fatigue, a lot of fatigue, and I just would feel anxious all the time. Even when I didn't know why I was anxious, I just felt anxious all the time. And then you went to see a different doctor at a different health system. Right. Who told you what? Right. It, it was like over probably five years, I kept going back to the doctor. Oh, so this was just in search of trying to figure out yes, what was wrong. Yes, yes. It was like as I would have these reoccurring symptoms and not know, like the constant question, you can ask my husband, I would ask him every day, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I just really felt like something was wrong with me. And so I would go to the doctor and say, I have all this joint pain. And so I would, you know, either get a lot of blood work or have a physical exam um, or be sent to specialists. Over the, that span of five years, I saw lots of specialists and I had a lot of medical tests. So you're, I'm sure at this point thinking, there is something serious. Doctors are not pinpointing it. In yeah. fact, one of the doctors said, then you should go see a counselor. Right. And what did the counselor say to you? Right. Um, well, over that course of years, I mean, it was a very stressful time to, you know, 
schedule an appointment with a specialist and wait to see the specialist. And then I had abdomen scans, chest x-rays, brain MRIs and all these things. And I feel like at every appointment I went to, um, they kind of just thought it was all postpartum or they thought that I did have anxiety. So when they told me to go see a counselor, I kind of thought, okay, maybe it is postpartum, maybe it is anxiety. And that's what the counselor was saying too. Like, um, you know, she taught me how to deal with my anxiety. She was honestly, it was kind of sad because she was telling me that, you know, you're not feeling these things. It's just your anxiety. In fact, that they I'm labeled you. Magic, hypochondriac. Yeah. And I'm sure that with that, but then still having the symptoms just left you in. Yes, yeah. yes. It, it was just a really hard time because then, you know, even your, your family that knows what you're going through, they think, oh, right. you're not feeling that. But it's yeah. like, no, I am. I am feeling it. But so, you start to doubt yourself. <laughs> yeah, and you were sharing with me that you were telling this to a friend of yours who said, you know, you should probably go see another doctor and ask them to consider taking additional tests. And what did those doctors tell you? Yes, it was probably after, you know, five years, I had a friend that knew I just never felt right. And she also knew that I had the diagnosis of IBS. And one day we were just talking and she said, you know, I've heard a lot of people that have IBS. Some of them, not all of them, some of them actually have celiac disease. And I didn't know what celiac disease was, but that was planted in my head. And I knew that I wasn't gonna let it go until I asked for the test. <laughs> so being that I was always asking my doctor for help and questions, I hesitated. So I did wait a few months and I finally, you know, next time I was in to the doctor's office, I said, could you run the blood test screening for celiac disease. And I really didn't think I had it. So when they called a week or two later with the results and said that if just from the screening, we know that you have celiac disease, your results were sky high. I was just the totally The sense of relief, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I'm it sure was. that at least you had something that was more of a definitive right. diagnosis right. that at least allowed you to begin this process of healing. Right. Yeah. So you would imagine that it would be bad news to be told <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, you know, this is the disease that you had, but it, it was. It turned Just out to like be good said, news because was, at least you had... It was a relief yeah. to finally know what was wrong. And that's, of course, how you ended up finding the AHN Celiac Disease Center. Right, and right. And what was it like to finally get to a place that knew exactly the symptoms that you were having and to be able to help you out. Yeah, it, w it was just, it was wonderful. Um, you know, after I hung up the phone, the recommendation from um, my PCP at that time was to eat gluten-free and see a nutritionist. Um, and that is not sufficient. And the only reason I wasn't comfortable with that was I didn't know what celiac disease was, so I went to the Celiac Disease Foundation website, and as I was reading all these symptoms of celiac disease, and I had so many of them, tears just like rolled down my face, because I was like, oh my gosh, this is what's wrong with me. Mm. And as I was reading about it, I knew a nutri just to see a nutritionist. A nutritionist is very, a wonderful part of you know your treatment, but I knew I needed to see a gastroenterologist. And so, I, again, I did an inter internet search, and there's plenty of, you know, gastroenterologists in our area, but when I came upon the Celiac Disease Center, I honestly felt like I had hit the lottery because all in one place, I could see a gastroenterologist. I could see a dietitian and a nutritionist, and all on their webpage, they had all of this information about celiac disease. It was. It was amazing. Yeah, we're going to get into that because I know how important it was for you to find doctors there and to yes. get the help and support that you needed. And so when we do return, we'll talk with Julie about the answers she found at Allegheny Health Network and the experts who helped to treat her.